community arts. Oh, I don't understand anything about community arts. It was a trip out to the West End for us lads. The Warhol exhibition at the ICA, um, the pop art exhibition, um, you know, where, you, where I fell in love with Klaus Oldenburg. You know, I went straight back to school and made a giant cheese and tomato sandwich, basically, which is probably the English answer to his, one of his burgers, soft burgers. Assemblages um, and collage, Rauschenberg's work was just, we were just knocked out by. Uh, and the fact that you could use, you could use a door um, to paint on um, and uh, turn a painting into three dimensions and all of those things at that age of 16, 17 were just key to, to uh, a different way of thinking. Pop art probably partly popularised screen printing in art schools. But also you've got, I mean, what I mean by pop art, sometimes I think of those sort of classic famous artists that we know. But if you also think about um, the kind of posters of the counterculture, brightly coloured, um, you know, visually really kind of dynamic, attractive, you know, and quite diverse. I mean, not that sort of, you know, swirly, psychedelia things, all of that. 24th of June, 1970. Fabulous stuff. All of it, everything. His drawings, fantastic. His, yeah, so his uh, shop days, making, making very quick plaster knickerbocker glories and cheesecakes and that way of working and using, using whatever materials you've got have always been inspirational and, and, and proof of the simplicity of you know, creativity. So working, with, with, with working in communities, working with various groups of people. Bruce Bernard, who was a wonderful um, picture editor, he called me up and he said, Red, he said, are you free this afternoon? I think it was already about three o'clock. And I said, well, yeah, I am. He said, well, can you get down to the Ritz Hotel and photograph Andy Warhol? And I went, oh, what? <laughs> what do you mean photograph Andy Warhol? Do I want to photograph Andy Warhol? Get out of here. You know what I mean? Wonderful job. So, OK, me and Jackie, who, who worked with me at the studio at the time, we said, right, OK, let's get all the kit together. Get down. We can walk down to the Ritz, not far from where the studio was. So we walked down to the Ritz Hotel, get to the Ritz. And of course, Andy's got like a kind of, I, I assume it's like a suite or, or nearly like a floor. He had a whole, whole big space. So we go in and it's like, it's like a, a scene out of a Fellini movie. You know, there's all kind of beautiful people hanging about and, you know, doing drugs and smoking and eating and drinking and it's just you know really classic like out of a painting you know so this guy comes up and he goes hi i'm i'm ryan silowitz you know, he's the editor of interview magazine andy's magazine he says andy's busy now he said can you can you wait we know we'll be right with you and i'm so it was very polite. I was like, okay sure we'll wait so we wait and we wait and we wait and we wait and finally he says andy's coming and andy comes in and um, Andy's like really little guy, he's, you know, he's really small and he's got his funny silver wig on and he's dressed English fogey, you know, waistcoat, you know, all this, all this stuff. And he, he goes across and he, he sits down in this little sofa, and he, which makes him even smaller. And so Ron goes, Andy, this is Reg. And I go, no, it's not Reg, it's Red, you know. And, 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 and I go across to him and I go, hi Andy, you know, really nice to meet you. And he shakes hand and it's the classic wet dead fish hand. He looks up at me and he goes, do you know what I really am thinking of in New York City? I said, I'm sorry. And then he went, you've got two different coloured socks on. And I said, oh yeah, so I have. That's great, I like that. And then off we went to this one... <laughs> And he said, what do you want to do? And I said, and he turned out to be one of the best sitters I've ever had. He knew exactly what lens I was using. Is that the 24 or the 28? I, I do like the 24 on the Nikon. You know, like, I actually know it's a 28 mil on this one. And he set it all up and off we went. And he was absolutely, did whatever I asked him to do. He was the perfect sitter. And bang, seven o'clock, we were gone. Working with people, having a common interest. And then the wider, I did art history at school. A-level art history, but it was sort of slightly different. It wasn't that straight. 
you know, art school training where you, you're introduced to lots of artists. It was, a very, it was just a different way of getting involved in art practice, which was to do with doing it. Screen printing coming into art schools, you sort of can't take that out of the equation. That it starts to become, all oh, right, here's um, an interesting visual medium. But on the other hand, you've got people involved in politics being interested in a visual medium. It was because of the influence of graphics, photography, um, animation, um, printing, silk screen printing, um, punk graphics, the chopping up and cutting up of things, uh, filmmakers, uh, musicians, all this huge collective of creative people, uh, very much as the heart of Ra. I had this idea that we'd have our own fanzine and I got the name uh, Temporary Hoarding. What this was doing was really signalling how important we felt that graphics would be in the fight against racism and fascism in this country. It was an incredibly important w tool in our weapon box, you know, to, 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 to use every bit of graphic power we had. One of the very first things I did was I went to David King, who's one of the best graphic designers in the country at the time, who I used to work with at the Sunday Times Colour Supplement. And I said to him, can you design us a, a logo for Ra? Because I want a logo or a flag. And he came up and that's his design. And it's, uh, it's just so neat, bang, simple to the point. It's cool, it's fantastic. And we, it became millions of images all over the country over the next five years. And badges, posters, silk screens, everything. And the Ra logo, it's called the Ra Stars, gone into history. And you can have it in red, green, pink, blue, whatever you want, you know. And so that was the founding image. And then every issue, it would open up into a poster that could go on your, in your school, in your college, on your bedroom wall. You could post it up on a street, anywhere. So this was after the Battle of Lewisham. Here's the fascists here, who attempted to break the black community. That's why Lewisham was so important. Lewisham was vital to them as it was to us. We had to stop them, they had to break us. You know, and that's why Lewisham was, is so huge in, 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 the, in the history of anti-fascism. There was the anti-racism campaign, based, you know, based around the anti-Nazi league and rock against racism. There was the Nicaragua Solidarity campaign, which is a big one. There was the East London Troops Out movement, which was also a big one. And then there's the support for the miners, anti-apartheid, lesbian and gay right. And then latterly, there was the response to uh, police brutality, mainly in Stoke Newington prison, where um, Trevor Monoville was killed, or he died in hospital after being choked in the in the police station. And his family took over the print shop for something like two weeks. They had their main campaign office in my office, and we printed posters, you know, about Trevor in the in the print shop, or a couple of posters. Um, the Nicaragua Solidarity Campaign got taken far enough where I went to Nicaragua for three months. The minor strike in my house in Stoke Newington, we gave up half our income to the miners for the duration of the strike. It was a, a collective output. That was really, that was really important, actually. Um, so, and I don't remember any, any issues about that and nobody's ever sort of said anything. That was, that was part of the ethos, it was part of the politics. Um, it wasn't about me and my name and my, you know, my, my idea. Um, it seemed more powerful in a way, um, if it wasn't, yeah, if it was collective.